Hey there, I'm so glad that you're joining me. Thanks for being here. You're gonna be glad you're here. Let me tell you why, because I get the privilege to talk to someone who is not only, let's see, a poet, a songwriter, a rapper, an industry changer, an innovative uh, person who has brought life to what could be considered a dying genre, really, mm -hmm. um, within particularly faith-based circles, but really on a broad spectrum as well. And so, you know, there's so many layers to this guy. And more than all of that, I am a mom of some kids who have fallen in love with the Lord and with faith because of the work of Lecrae. Wow. Thank you so much for oh, being here. Thank you. I'm so glad That's, that you're here. It's good to talk to you. It's awesome. It's a privilege. It's good to see you. I feel like I feel like I know you because yeah. I'm in the car with the boys and I mean they got the bass going, the windows down. <laughs> it's just Lecrae everywhere yeah, we thank go. Thank you. Thank you to your boys. Yes, yeah. they love you. And yeah. so tell us, tell us where you are right now. People want to know where you are, what you're doing, what's oh, happening man. in your life presently. Man, I am uh I'm hundred percent right now in in tour mode, in yeah. album mode, in okay. daddy mode. So, <laughs> how are you doing that, tour and daddy at the same time? So, what I do is every break, while the the, the team may ride on to the next city on the tour bus, I fly home to yeah. give my wife a couple of days off. And uh, <laughs> good, it job. Is, good, oh, job, <laughs> good job, good job, Good job. Yeah, so it's it's a task at hand, especially when you used to stand up super late on a tour and then yeah. you come home, wake up, take kids to school, make breakfast, and yep. so. Uh, but it's been a blessing, you know, and I know it'll it'll pay off its dividends in the end. So cool. So yeah. Well, if you are not aware, Lecrae is a Grammy Award winning. It happened. I mean, let's be clear. It happened. It happened. It happened <laughs> not just once. Two times. Two times. Yeah. Grammy Award winning rapper. Now I hear you're a little bit opposed to the Christian rapper label, and yeah. why is that? So <clears throat> I am a Christian. Yes, you are. I mean, Christian is an incredible noun. Either you look in the Bible, there's Christians in the Bible. <laughs> uh, but sometimes it's a confusing adjective. Yeah, so sometimes yeah. when you put it in front of something else, it can. what does it mean? You know, does yeah. it mean that you're going to agree with the content? Does it mean that the content is going to be God honoring? What if the song is about marriage? What, what, how does, you know, and how does that work? And so for me, I, I feel as if um, there's some due diligence that needs to be done in terms of using that word as an adjective yep. a lot of times. Um, Do you think it pigeonholes, it pigeonholes you? Like it makes people put expectations yeah. And a label around what you're going to do and what you're going to present to them that kind of puts you in a narrow bracket? Sometimes, absolutely. So okay. it's happened plenty of times uh, before where it, whereas I think there's an expectation. A, a lot of times people think if you say it's Christian, it's for Christians. So there's yeah. nothing beneficial for me if I pick this up because I'm not a Christian. And, uh, and I would say, no, 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 no. Yeah, you know, yeah. you, the air you breathe was given to you by God and you love that air. I know you do. Yeah. So there's something for you. Uh, there's some common grace, and, and, that, and that common grace I extend in my music, and I want everybody to be able to, you know, absorb it and for it to, you know, to, to be effective for whoever listens. How do you think you've been able to cross the spectrum um, from sort of a Christian pocket and a yeah. Christian niche over into this secular, yeah. um, you know, appreciation that people have for you? Sure. How do you? Because very few people that kind of start in this pool of faith-based, yeah. whether it's writing or whether it's um, singing or rapping or whatever, yeah. very few people are able to kind of put a foot in both worlds and still maintain sure. their level of integrity in their art and mm -hmm. in their message. How do you think you've been able to do that? Why? I think <clears throat> the reason why it's, it's not, there's first of all, there's models. And I think a lot of people haven't explored the models. So you look at someone like Dr. Martin Luther King, who um, is appreciated by people outside the faith, yeah. but also is, it, it, esteemed within the faith as well. And I think it's because there's an, not just a proclamative model, but an incarnate model, right? Okay. So, You're so, so deep. That sounded so deep. <laughs> I was just, into Explain the day, that for the regular people like so me. I think Christians, <laughs> we have, we have um, limited ourselves to just proclaiming and not being incarnate and living and living. caring about the, yeah. the issues of our society. And, and the world sometimes will feel like all y'all care about is talking about what y'all want to talk about. Do y'all care about us? Do y'all care about our pains, our hurts, our woes, our struggles? What do you have to say about, you know, um, the, this issue of racism and, and segregation and, and systemic oppression? Do you have a voice on any of these things mm -hmm. or do mm -hmm. you just want to come in and um, and, and, and say, you know, your little trite sayings yep. uh, and speak Christianese to yep. us. And, I, and what I think I've tried to do is speak about all the things that would affect people, you know, from all walks of life. Yep. But I'm just speaking about them from my worldview, from my perspective, which I would hope is lined up with God's perspective. That's so, cool. And, yeah. and I appreciate your perspective, actually. In fact, 
I've got my hands on one of the very first copies. I don't even think they're gonna let me keep this one. <laughs> I'm not even supposed to actually That's have it. That's the one that feels good. It feels yeah, like, oh, they're loaning it smooth. to me. It's one of the first ones you hot know, off the press. Have, let, I tried to get them to let me have I'm, it. They will we'll not work let it me out. have it. We'll work it out. I was gonna let you, you like put the boys, my son's name, See. my name, my husband's name. You in, said it now. It's, it's I out said there. it. I know. So it has to. I, I just don't think they care. I think they're gonna <laughs> I think they're still gonna take it back. But this is one of the very first copies of a book that you have to get your hands on. Yeah. I actually <clears throat> I got a hold of this um, last night. I've already read a huge portion oh, of wow. it. Wow. Completely captivated wow. by um, the sense of mission in this book. Like mm. it's not just a memoir, but it's very clear that the reason why you are recounting where you've been is because you're trying to point the reader yeah. toward what your mission is, what your yeah. purpose is. That it's not just about good music, yeah. which, by the way, the music is good. But it's not just about that. You're actually trying to accomplish something. Mm -hmm. I think it would benefit people who just know you because they are listening to you or their teens are listening to you. I think it'd benefit people to hear a little bit about where you came from. Because yeah. it wasn't all just roses and white picket fences <laughs> and you have a story to tell. If any, were you there, have a story were there to any tell. roses? So just <laughs> sort of in a nutshell, yeah. how does your story to becoming unashamed, which by the way, I love that this is clever to me mm. because it's not just like you're unashamed of the gospel. It's yeah. kind of like you were ashamed and now you are un. That's good. You have been made you un are, you, ashamed. You got it. <laughs> Is that was she that the goal it. here you with the up on it. Okay, that was very all right. Good. So tell us sort of where the shame began in your past. Yeah. And then how you got that little dash <clears throat> in there that made you unashamed. Yeah, um, I think a lot of the long story short, yeah. it, it's gonna all come back to uh being abandoned by my father, right? Okay. My biological father. And I think every boy just looks up to their dad no matter what. Their yeah, dad could just be any kind of terrible person, but there's just something in you that looks at dad as this hero mm -hmm. until you learn otherwise. And for, for me to not have my hero there um, and not have a good explanation or understanding of why, it, it made me feel like I was the, the problem and, and yeah. I felt insecure. And so I'm constantly fighting for the approval of people and fighting for someone to validate me. You never having a dad to say, good job, son, I'm proud of you. You made it, this is what it means to be a man, this is how this looks. You grow up looking for that in every other place you can possibly find it. And um, <clears throat> you know, for me, what it did was it made me ashamed of who I was if who I was didn't fit in. Yeah. If who I was. So it's like you're always trying to negotiate. How do I fit into this pocket exactly. of people so I can be accepted and exactly. feel the love that really, even when you felt it, though, I remember feel, uh, reading about that. Even when you felt accepted, though, there was still a hole that didn't absolutely. get filled because it's just a dad size hole. Absolutely. Needed a dad. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. And, yep. And, and so you're wrestling, constantly wrestling, trying to figure that out. And you're, you're finding anything you can to fill that hole, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. and, and of course, there's the uh, uh, irreligious way, and that's what I did. I chased the irreligious way of just, you know, the prodigal son, the party, and the, the, the drugging, the, you know, promiscuity, and just looking for it and trying to find acceptance and meaning there, and it, and it wasn't satisfying. Um, and then, <clears throat> you know, there's a religious way, too, that people mm -hmm. try to fill that void that's not yep. fulfilling. Performance. And, exactly, and it's, it's performing for acceptance and, and having the mindset that if I just do better, God will love me more, the people of God will love me more, instead of understanding the grace of God and that I've been accepted already and it wasn't on account of anything I did, it was yep. all on account of him. Yep. And that, that really got me to a place of like, hey, I'm already accepted, what yep. am I? Yep. I'm, I'm unashamed, let me go ahead and be honest because there's nothing anybody can do to, there's no condemnation for yep. me, you know, now that I'm in here. So. And, I, and I have to ask you this because <clears throat> as a mom of boys, so, yeah. you know, when I see you, I see my boys, you know what yeah. I mean? I see my sons, I, I see the hope that I have for them that they will have integrity and character as husbands and fathers and mm -hmm. leaders later, that they will enjoy their craft, mm -hmm. that they will be excellent in their craft. Mm -hmm. um, but I resonated so much and my heart was torn so much when I read about abuse that mm -hmm. you suffered in your life. Mm -hmm. And I, I want you to talk about that a little bit because really what I wanna get to are a couple of questions about it. Yeah. One being, is there anything that could have been done around you to stop that yeah. earlier than it stopped? Your mother was sure. very responsible after she found out about it. Sure, and, and sure, calling sure. It. But is there anything that could have done that, that could have happened? So tell us just in a nutshell about the abuse, anything that could have been done to signify the people around you that it was happening yeah. uh, and put a halt to it. And then how you break that cycle, mm -hmm. uh, physical, sexual abuse, how you break that cycle now as a dad 
because yeah. you're so honest about, you know what, my wife sometimes have to put, has to put my anger in check because right. I'm just doing what I saw. Right. And so how do you break that so that it's not something that remains systemic in your, in your, you know, your family line? Yeah, I, I think one, <clears throat> well, the first thing is, I mean, you said it, it's systemic, right? Yeah. So, so there's a history there that, yeah. that, that dates way beyond me, that dates back to, you know, a family of sharecroppers and, and not having, you know, this family structure because families were split apart because people were sold to other plantations. Yeah. And so yeah. it, it's, it keeps trickling down to where grandpa doesn't understand how to raise a family and now there's 16 kids over here and there's all this stuff going on. So this is this historic systemic cycle yeah. that keeps repeating itself over and over again. And, um, and so I think my mother's idea was, okay, I'm got, I've got to break this cycle. I've got to figure this out. A lot of it was education for her and, you know, and just trying to navigate through that, that understanding. And I don't think there was much she could have done just because even she wasn't fully aware of the, you know, how this, this cycle had influenced family members and, and, you know, friends around us. And mm -hmm. so I don't think she would have even realized that. And, you know, it was a different time where people trusted each other. Here, take my kid, let him stay with you for the night. And it's stuff that, you know, I, I wouldn't have to have a background check for these days. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. Because um, this is just like a 17-year-old babysitter. Yeah, That's yeah. just helping your mom out yeah, to absolutely. hang on to you for a little while. Absolutely. And a female babysitter, which is so interesting because I think people, we so play up in our culture the abuse mm -hmm. of a male to a young female. female. Yeah. But it's, very, it's a very prevalent thing yeah. where there's a young male. Mm -hmm. with a female who's taking advantage yeah. of that. Yeah, and, and, and I've since talked to a lot of other guys who've experienced the same thing. And, you know, we, it, people make light of that, but it's a real thing that has long-term effects that I've experienced myself. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I, I think that moving forward, um, it's, a, it's a conscious effort. And, yeah. you're, and, and for me, not having these models in place to, to see what it looked like to be you know, brought up in, in a certain type of environment. I have to read books. I have to ask questions. I have to stop and ask married couples, hey, how's this? I stop and ask parents, you know, even, you know, uh, stopping to hear your husband talk a little bit and, and take mental notes and, mm. and just constantly learning and, and realizing that you don't have it all figured out. Yep. And um, there's a wisdom in the multitude of counselors. And that's what's helped me to break some of these cycles because I'm aware that yep. they're actually cycles. So th what do we do? What do we do about these systemic issues, particularly in the African-American culture, Lecrae? Yeah. What, is, what is your message gonna be to my three sons, to your own son, to all of these particularly younger men that are listening to you, watching you, and of course, integrity in your own, your own yeah. life? Because yeah. you know, <laughs> Yeah. Like it or not, they're watching, watching what you're going the kind of um, husband you're gonna yeah. be, the kind of father, grandfather later on that you're gonna be, and how you're gonna handle this ministry, but really business and outreach that God yeah. has given you. But but what do we do as a people, as mm -hmm. a as a society, to try to break these horrible cycles mm -hmm. again that plague our culture in general? Yeah. But particularly <clears throat> African American men, I think it's like seventy or eighty percent. Yeah our yeah. single parent homes yeah. because our men are missing. Right. Yeah, I, you know, we, we, some people call it uh, post-traumatic slave syndrome where you've got <laughs> uh, men who were never, you know, on, a, on, on a, a plantation, they were not, they didn't have to be responsible for the kids. Right. They were just used to breed them, go on and get some work done, have kids all over the place and just, and work. As long yeah. as you work and you're fine. And it's almost as if that mentality, that cycle, that systemic perspective is just trickled down uh, but don't to, you think like people are using that as an excuse though? I, I think some people think that, um, I, I don't think everyone realizes how it's perpetuated in our own homes, yeah. in our own environments, right? Yeah. So I don't think people realize how it's perpetuated and how different, different time periods have given way to that being a crutch, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, you can name all types of the war on drugs. There's all types of different things that would, that could bring in a reason to lean on that, yeah. right? <clears throat> yeah. But um, but I think it's understanding who you are and understanding your identity um, is understanding that you know, uh, despite your circumstances, despite what you know, society or culture that you grew up in, um, you were made in God's image. That you're an image bearer. That uh, Ephesians two ten that you that that God has created you for good works that He's already yep. preplanned. Yep. And um, and you've got to understand that and and walk that out. And 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 a lot of the issue does stem from 
the church has to be the leaders in, in our society and our culture. We, yeah. we, we're, we're the ones with, you know, this information and understanding where we come from and our value and our, our worth and, and our we've meaning. we've got the answer. Exactly. Like the one true answer. Exactly. Yeah. And so I think that's where a lot of it has to come from. And unfortunately, in the black community and African-American community, the church after the civil rights era, I feel like has been kind of silent for the last 30 years in terms of like being a voice in the community. It's kind of like, oh, just, just come to service and... You know, right. uh, and so that silence has made people say, well, you guys have been quiet. Why should we listen now? Mm -hmm. and, and that's why mm -hmm. I, I feel like the incarnate part has to take place. We've got to be visible. We've got to be present in, yep. in the community uh, for people to say, okay, this is a trusted voice yeah. um, that can tell me about being a father, being a husband, being a leader, and so on so and so forth. So if the music was <clears throat> stripped away, yeah, no more music, who would you be? Uh, I, I definitely... You know, the music is a, is a creative outlet to express passions, express um, burdens, desires, pains, turmoils. I think I, I, I would probably be some sort of professor at a college or something like that. You so know? you love teaching? Yeah, it's, it, I love shaping. I love shaping and influencing. So it's not so much the structure of teaching as much as it is. Sh shaping culture mm. and, and looking for ways to shape culture and to and I, th I think college students are those young minds you can launch out into society who are just idealists and they're going to take something and they're going to run with it and, yeah. uh, and so I, I would see myself in that realm some kind of way being an influence well what's next for you what, what's next I mean you just <clears throat> you, you just dropped an album yeah, put out uh, Church Close 3. Does it make me sound old that I just said album? No, you're fine. Do people still say that? Well, technically it is an album. It is an album. Yeah, technically Thank you. it is. So I'm not yeah, old. You're right. Thank you're you. Right. Appreciate you're that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so you, you know. just dropped an album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and you're on tour. On tour. Okay. You know, wrapping up the tour. Um, you know, the, the, the book, uh, you know, uh, May 3rd is everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. I heard Barnes & Noble has a hold on this. They just, like, can't wait to get it on the bookshelves. Well, as long as people run in there and go get it from Barnes & Noble, we're in, good, we're in a good place. By the way, there's some really, really great photographs in here. <laughs> I had to put, you know, I'm, I'm a product of public schools. You know, I, I needed pictures in my book. You know what I mean? So <laughs> That's yeah, amazing. Just, yeah, and for all the millennials out there, we did an audio book as well. You so did. That's I'll, great. I'll read y'all bedtime stories because I know that's how they... <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I really, um, I'm, you know, the book is an exciting piece and that's what's happening. And I'm, I'm back in the studio this summer working on a, a, a bigger full length project and I'm excited about that. So that's so great. Yeah. And, uh, you didn't tell us your wife's name. What is her Dara, name? Dara, like Sarah with the D. And how long have y'all been married? We are 10 years. 10 so years married. 10 years. And we had a big three celebration. Kids. Three kids. How old are they? Uh, four, seven and eight. There you go. Yeah. And I read in here, it says underneath their picture that they are your priority. 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 How, did that, how, how does she know that? How does she know that she's your priority? Like, what does Lecrae do okay. to tell his wife, to show his wife that, that, I, that she's, she's the priority. one? Yeah. Um, I mean, my wife enjoys quality time. Okay. And so, that's her love language. Yeah, her okay. love language is quality time. And, um, and she knows that's not mine. So... <laughs> So for me to sacrifice my time. Do I dare just, ask you what yours is? I'm like words of affirmation and service, acts of service. Okay. So okay. yeah, so you know, hers is, is quality time. And for somebody who travels all the time. That's huge, yeah, that's a big it's, deal. It's kind of like, so, you know, for me to, to fly 6 a.m. flights back home when I just got off stage at 1 a.m., it's like, she's like, okay, I matter. I'm yeah, a priority. You know what I good. mean? That's good. That's um, good. So it's things like that. You know, we and we build the schedule around her and the kids. Every year we'll make sure nobody can touch family camp. You know, we nice. take our take our family to camp and get refreshed. There's just some times nobody can touch our vacations yep. and anniversaries and her birthday. Yep. And so it's just things like that where, you know, you make sure they're priority. I prioritize some would say this is kind of selfish, but when I, the way I try to look at it is I have to be healthy. So if you I'm do. not emotionally, spiritually and, and mentally healthy, I'm no good for them. Yeah. And so a lot of people will sacrifice their own selves for the sake of career and family and so on and so forth. But And then they lose their family. Exactly. They're not healthy. Exactly. They have no sense of well-being and centeredness or soundness about themselves. Exactly. No it's, relationship with God that's no, vibrant and fresh. No intimacy to give out, and so you're empty. Yeah. And um, yeah. so constantly making sure that I'm taking time to be full uh, so that I can give back to my family, and then if there's anything left over, then the yeah. fans can have it. 
Well, listen, I get, I keep getting ready to end the interview, yeah. but I keep thinking of stuff to ask you. Okay. So, you have a picture in here with your pastors. Yeah. I love that picture because yeah. I thought, here's this guy that has two Grammys, mm. and he's still making sure and sees the the importance of being under the covering. Mm -hmm. For for a man to remain under the covering of another who he will submit to their authority. Yeah. That, that's a huge that's problem, big. too, with men of any culture yeah. <laughs> to just say, I'm not too successful, that I don't need somebody that's over me that I'm going to submit to them. Why is that important to you? Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, even that word authority, right? Like, when you think about it, an authority means, you know, you can't speak from a place of authority unless it's been given to you. And unless I submit to an authority, I can't speak with an authoritative voice. And... Um, and, and so I think it's, one, it's just part of the biblical framework is, is it to is, submit to your, your, yeah. your pastors. And, and I think I'm more afraid of being a rogue out here, you know? I don't, yep. I don't Like a wanna, loose cannon yeah. somewhere. Uh, yep. that would, I mean, I've I just seen how detrimental that is for people. Yep. And just to have um, great pastoral leadership that cares about me, that, you know, I know my wife is, is taken care of and is comfortable and they're going to check in and, um, and make sure that, the, the home front is safe and, and then also not afraid to tell me I'm wrong, you know, and you need Check that. You. Yeah. If I, <laughs> I'm the type of person, tell me, I want to know, you know what I mean? Don't yeah, let good. me out. Don't, don't leave me out here going. Just looking crazy. Right. Just <laughs> sit me down and say, hey, you need to, mm, no. Yeah, you need yeah. To, mm -mm. That's good. So, That's so good. Love it. Yeah. Well, listen, I want to say bravo. I want to say bravo because you. you have represented well. I'm grateful. Um, and you, you are influencing a generation of, of, particularly, again, everybody, because I'm listening to you, my husband's listening to you, mm -hmm. so you have a lot of us that are, are influenced by your music, but again, as a mom of young boys, the mm -hmm. fact that I know I can trust yeah. your music and those that are associated with you, and my boys can listen to it and know the words and know yeah. the songs and be influenced by them. We actually made them, by the way, sit down and look up the words to the song, not just be singing them, but look at the words, know what he's saying. There's wow. a message in there that he's saying, wow. look it up so That's you can big. talk to us about what he's trying to tell you. That's big. Um, and so the fact that I can do that yeah. and know that there's gonna be sub something of substance there for my That's boys, huge. I just say bravo, bravo. Thank you. And we, we're all for you. We are that for you. That means a lot, yeah. it sincerely it does. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, thank grateful. you. Grateful, really grateful.